Hello everyone, it's another vlog. So, I don't know that I'll be doing this weekly, but we're about to go for a long weekend to Ole Miss for a variety of things, and I thought I'd do a little travel vlog. So I am gonna walk you through how I pack. I'm not yet dressed, we're leaving this um, evening, six o'clock flight. So here's how I walk through the last bit of packing. This is my travel uh, toiletry bag that is Unfortunately, no longer available. It was from the premium collection from um, Colleen Rothschild that's filled with, filled with all of my toiletries. Um, and these are some things that are going in my carry-on. I never pack my contact lenses because if those get lost, I will be blind along with my glasses. That goes in my carry-on. These are some things that still need to get packed. Um, bringing my travel makeup mirror always. But I wanted to show you how I pack my makeup. So I just finished putting on my makeup and this is what I will be putting in my makeup bag. And as you can see, as I'm doing my makeup, I set aside to the side here. So that way I know that I will not forget anything. And then just to be sure, I maybe add an extra blush, a couple more brushes and so forth. And a quick little tip I wanted to share with you. I had gone to the dollar store and bought these, I don't know, four for a dollar, little cheap microfiber cloths. And if you have dirty brushes, like I always do, you just take your brush, and this is gonna be hard to do one-handed, so just take my word for it, and you rub it vigorously. I can't do it one-handed. Rub your dirty, dry brush vigorously on a dry microfiber cloth. It's not gonna get it 100% clean, but I would say 90% clean. I already did the one side, and that's what it looked like on the other side. So if you're traveling and you don't have time to have them air dry, you know, on a sink or something like that, this is a great travel alternative. So I'll be throwing that in my makeup bag as well. These are some extra brushes that I had grabbed. So that's what's going in my makeup bag. So the challenge in this vlog was while I wanted to document everything that we did, I also wanted to keep my family out of it. It was a learning curve. The vlogs, as we go along, once the kids are gone, you will see a lot more, but I'm kind of like easing into it because I do miss doing it, but I'm trying to balance this. And there was a lot of stuff because it was a kind of like a businessy type, not YouTube business, but personal business type trip. So there was a lot I couldn't show. So anyway, Thursday night, not a lot to show, just really sitting on a plane, two, two flights to get to Memphis, rent a car, drive a little over an hour down to Oxford, Mississippi, late night, there you go. So let's hop over to Friday. Good morning. I didn't get to show you last night because we got in at midnight, but we are staying at The Graduate, Oxford, which is right off the square. And one of our probably two favorite places to stay when we're here in Oxford. So let's pop in. We just came back from running some errands and I'll show you my favorite part, the lobby. They also have two great restaurants here. One is called Cabin something. There's a number after it. But um, look how cute it is here. I just grabbed a quick yogurt. It's really fun. And that couch right back there is actually kind of a hammock. Uh, most times of the day, it's filled with kids studying. I thought I'd give you a quick little tour of the room while I have no one in it with me and it's neat. All the rooms are pretty standard, pretty basic bathroom over there, not much to see. I love this mirror concept with the lamps right attached to it. It goes all the way to the floor. Oftentimes I just like to sit on the floor and do my makeup right there. We have a standard double queen. Very kind of cutesy and kitschy, little touches. We have an unfinished concrete ceiling in all the rooms. And instead of a closet, which is not that big of a deal 
uh, in Europe, but in America you don't see this very often. It's sort of like almost like a school locker um, instead of a, a built-in closet. It's a freestanding armoire piece there. It's sort of like a school theme. The notebook that has all the amenities. Looks like a little composition notebook, a little vintage phone, little fun touches in the room. And uh, there you have it. Very comfy and fun. Um, and that is our home away from home while we're here. One of the places we always come visit, because you can never have enough Rebel gear, is Rebel Rags. And yes, there's the campus bookstore and a few other places around Oxford that sell Ole Miss gear and Ole Miss fan stuff, but this place, I've never seen anything like it. There's two sections to it, and I'm standing in the newer section, which has most of the t-shirts and jerseys and stuff. I'm gonna just take you around really quickly, so check this out. You want decals for your car? They've got them. Banners and flags? There you go. And here we start the rows and rows of t-shirts. Hang on. I don't know if you can fully grasp what's going on here but it's rows and rows and rows and rows and rows. Anybody need some bows? I mean, oh my gosh. Of course, this is my favorite part. If you need kitchenware, oh, they have that too. And all the stuff for tailgating and sitting in a stadium. Just right. And more. This is the second section. This is the original part of the store. And this is where I get most of the Ole Miss stuff you see me wearing. It's a little more contemporary, super soft, and I just love it. So, Rebel Rags, it's on Jackson Ave. I'll put the uh, website because they do um, have an online store and they ship, which is something I've taken advantage of as well. So, Friday morning we ran some errands and then Friday afternoon was the meeting that Michael and I went to on our own while Shane did his own thing with friends that he was with in town and Jake obviously had class and things like that. Um, Michael and I, like I mentioned in a previous video, we sit on something called the Family Leadership Council. There's something like it at pretty much every university, public or private, so if you want to get involved more on your adult children's campus, I urge you to look into it. It's usually through um, the Office of I don't even know. You know what? I don't know. But if I can think of what it's through, I will put it into the description box below. Ours is through the Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs, but each university has a different um, development type office. So I urge you to look into that if you want to get involved. Ours focuses specifically on how to help fund um, areas of the university that are underfunded, un populations that are underserved, and we raise money, and then every spring we vote to figure out how to distribute the endowment and things like um, underserved populations such as first generation uh, students whose families have never attended college before, veterans that are coming back to campus or who are coming for the first time, the Student Recreation Center. <coughs> Rowdy's bringing me his bone. Hang on. You want me to hold it for you? He brings me his bone and then I hold it for him. Speaking of students, the one that still lives with us just walked in. Anyway, um, things like we helped fund, I mean, not me personally, but like the entire like almost 60 some odd parent groups that are involved, um, help fund the new Drug and Alcohol Awareness Counseling Center, all kinds of, um, we help fund police. Anyway, lots of great ways to get involved on your individual child's campus, but that meeting um, was Friday afternoon, so I didn't film that. And then Friday night, we did manage to get back onto the square and go to one concert. So another great breakfast spot here in Oxford is called the Brick and Spoon. I don't know. I think it's a franchise. I'm not entirely sure. I'll put the website in the description box. If you're into Bloody Marys, I'm not. But if you are, they have a build your own Bloody Mary bar. Um, but the menu is fabulous. The portions are very generous. 
And today we are starting off our breakfast with a little appetizer of breakfast fries. So Saturday morning we did get to spend time with both boys and had a little bit of breakfast and then we all kind of went our separate ways. They like Shane had friends in town, Jake went off with his friends and we all ended up on the square. And I wanted to film more of the individual artists booths but there were two problems with that. One, there were so many people. It's one thing to get a big crowd scene kind of from afar on video, but to get up close to the pieces of art with people right there in the booth. There are probably tens of thousands of people there and it was really hard to film without getting right into people's personal business. And the artists, I didn't think they really would appreciate me getting their pieces on film. They're there to sell the art, not for me to take pictures of it. So I just, I couldn't do it. Um, if you go to the website, which I'll put in the description box below about Double Decker Arts Festival, I'm sure you can see some pictures from it or go to their Facebook page. And I will put the website of the artist that I am cannot stop thinking about the art that he had. There was one, he goes to abandoned old buildings and takes pictures of them. And there was an old synagogue actually in Chicago that still has the beautiful stained glass and everything else is abandoned and wrecked around it. And it's this beautiful stretched um, photograph on canvas and I, I'm holding a dog bone and I cannot stop thinking about it. Anyway, I will probably eventually order a piece from him. I will put that in the description box. <laughs> amazing kinds of art here. You have everything from watercolor, oil paintings, woodworking, jewelry, floral arts, um, all different kinds of food, sculpture, you name it. It's really amazing. Just to give you an idea, this is the layout of where all the booths and everything are. This is ground zero where the courthouse is. And then this. Is the lineup of bands for Friday night and then all day today into the evening. Then, as the sun started to go down and the temperatures cooled off a little bit, we made our way back to the main stage and went for. Um, the music part, the concert part of the Double Decker Arts Festival, and wow, I don't think I can describe the crowds. We did not stay, we, we stayed for the final act, maybe the first song and a half, and it just got overwhelming. You were just like this, and I am not a crowd person, so it was not particularly enjoyable for me. Um, it was just a little overwhelming. So at that point, we decided to call it a night. <laughs> Okay, I forgot to show you my outfit for hanging out at a festival. So, right before I take it all off, let me show you. Um, I don't know how much of this is still available, but this was the lightweight utility jacket from JCPenney. And, because it did cool off in the evening. And then this is my now very wrinkled um, little top with my tassels, also from JCPenney. These are my frame jeans. I love them. And I just slipped them off, so I actually just stepped back into them. Uh, Treasure and Bond sandals. And let me show you the earrings that I was wearing that people stopped me on the street to tell me how much they liked them. Hang on, let me go get them. So these are the Raffia earrings I picked up 
from Amazon. I absolutely love them. Very, very, very lightweight and very festival and summertime appropriate. I forgot the hero of the day was my Andy bag because I had the flip up like this, so I had my cell phone right here and mints actually were in here and this zips so nobody could reach in and grab anything. Perfect bag, crossbody, hero of the day. Okay, now back to undressing. It's getting late. Okay, we are coming up on the most celebrated breakfast place in Oxford. It's called Big Bad Breakfast, BBB, on the sign there. It looks so innocuous, but the wait times can be hours long. And in three years of having a child here in Oxford, I have never had the pleasure of eating here. Um, they also own Snack Bar and a few other places actually. But anyway, we got ourselves on the wait list. We are told it could be anywhere from 37 to 52 minutes, which is something of a miracle. Also, another place I've always wanted to eat at is this Japanese restaurant down there called Jinsei. Another time. But anyway, um, the boys are in Jake's car and we're gonna chill out and wait for about an hour, maybe less if we're lucky and Hopefully, we will finally get to sample the delights of Big Bad Breakfast. After hearing how amazing this just top breakfast spot in Oxford, Mississippi is called Big Bad Breakfast, we finally got to go. And when we checked in, it was anywhere from 37, I think it said 52 minutes. It was about an hour and a half. We finally got in and had our Big Bad Breakfast. I have almost no footage of that. Again, I apologize, but it was delicious. And um, we had a little bit of family time. And then we said our goodbyes and hit the road back to Memphis. And it was, it was a nice full weekend. We crammed as much as we could in. I actually, we got up to Memphis a little bit early and spent time with friends up there before we hopped in the plane and made our way back to San Antonio. So I know this was a little bit more of a mini vlog. What I'd like to do is write an accompanying blog post where I'm gonna put some of my favorite places to stay, eat, and shop in Oxford if you happen to be up there or down there, depending on where you're coming from the country. Um, because it is a great place to visit, even if you do not have a student attending Ole Miss, I absolutely recommend it. It is a hidden gem. They have so many James Beard Award nominated restaurants, you would not believe it. It is definitely a foodie town. There's some amazing shopping. Um, the home design stores are incredible. The boutiques are just, it's a wonderful little town. So I highly recommend it. I hope you like my mini vlog. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm easing my way back into this. Each one will get a little bit better, I promise. And uh, I can't wait to do another one for you soon. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.